I've decided to forgo my role and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Look here, brother. A little bird. Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove. But Charmony doves don't live here. So how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. But where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? But then it won't have the freedom to fly, right? Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention? of the two best interpreters of the Great One, to the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do, but I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered, and can't sing, it didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds... They should be flying free in the sky! <sighs> That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scholar? Do you agree with your sister? I think she's right. But if we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. When they fly really high, the friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. Their ancestors were too weak to survive on the ground. So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. So, you mean, birds aren't born to fly, but they find a way to do it through their determination, right? Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because... they've never seen those birds crashing to their death. That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself, because I... I want it to live, no matter what. Well said, kids. 
It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. We will take good care of it, won't we, brother? <laughs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood, there's one thing I don't quite understand. And what might that be, my son? What if this little Charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky, only to see them crash to the ground and die? Talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. <sighs> huh? <laughs> Need a hand? I'm still alive? Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. Heh. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands. Lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacony. Any of that catch your interest? I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is... the sense of justice inside of you. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. Huh? What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The names inscribed on it should be familiar to all of you. Rosalina and Tiernan. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us Donna, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on the small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, today the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but... she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, 
but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Penagoni faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lampmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. <laughs>